My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. And this podcast is all about becoming remarkable, where I take remarkable people from around the world, whether entrepreneurs or not, doing cool things with their life, to, sh- to spread their story, their journey, their experience, their expertise. Today, I'm joined with Jan Schmeichel to discuss, well, well, actually, Jan, please tell the world, who are you? <laughs> Thank you very much, Adrian. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, I am, as you said, I'm Jan. I'm originally from Czech Republic and I live in China right now. I live in Shenzhen, which I think is one of the most exciting cities in the world, not only in China, but in the world, uh, depending on uh, how you look at it, of course. But uh, in terms of tech and stuff, it's really, really exciting. We can talk about it later. What I do, I run a startup grind in Asia Startup Grind is number one entrepreneur community in the world, uh, meaning uh, that we have 1.5 million entrepreneurs in our network. We host events uh, around the world. Well, last year, we hosted 1,400 events. We host conferences, and we try to educate, inspire, and connect founders from all around the world. So you can think about it as a one a huge network of entrepreneurs that is helping each other. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Can you elaborate at all on that? In what way helping each other, for example? Yeah, so as I mentioned, so uh, we try to educate, inspire, and connect entrepreneurs. So when you start with the first one, educate. So what do we do? We host a lot of events, and we invite people, founders, executives, CEOs, uh, you name it, to our events. They come, they speak, we interview them, and that's how they share the knowledge with the audience. Also, as I said, we want to inspire them so they can get inspired. People in the audience can get inspired by these people that come and share their story or share some tips and tricks and experience with them. And uh, lastly, it's about the connection. So people connect offline at these events or they connect online through our channels or social media or just uh, afterwards when they when they meet each other at the event and they can they can exchange uh, exchange contacts as it is right so so basically we try to do these three things and that's how we try to uh help uh entrepreneurs around the world and how we are building community entrepreneur community in the world what is the entrepreneur scene like in asia so i was speaking to a guy in india and he says there's no real startup scene there there's no real push to be an entrepreneur people are quite content to Leave a life of mediocrity or be employed. Interesting. So uh, definitely it differs, right? Uh, it, it depends uh, because uh, every in Asia, when you when you say Asia, right, it it's a lot of countries, a lot of different cultures, and and so it definitely is different based on every single city or country uh, you look at. But I live in China, right? So I live in China, and yes, I can say that maybe entrepreneurship or the whole community, entrepreneur community is maybe not as developed as it is in Silicon Valley, where everybody looks, uh, everybody looks at Silicon Valley as the mecca of entrepreneurship. But there is a big push. Actually, there is a big push uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship. Government is trying to get involved. They try to support entrepreneurs. They try to support students that want to be entrepreneurs by giving them some special loans or giving them some incentives or, or even, uh, you know, creating, let's say, some government government uh let vc funds that are supposed to support suppose uh support startups you know on a on a city level and local level so so definitely there is a big push for that and yes maybe not so many people think about being an entrepreneur uh at this stage compared to again compared to us compared to europe uh but definitely it's changing and it's changing very fast and that's why i think that uh for example, Shenzhen, the city where I live, is one of the most exciting cities because you see the speed, you see the dynamics, and you see so many people, young people coming to the city from all around the world, of course, mostly from still from China, from all around China, and uh, trying to uh, try to set up startups and uh, get involved. So it's really, really exciting right now. All right, so I'm very curious then. Why did you start this? And how did you, <laughs> and why did you become an entrepreneur? Yeah, so uh, I became an entrepreneur when I was still at the university, when I was still in Czech Republic, where I come from. So I was studying my bachelor. I was studying economics and finance, and and I knew that I always wanted to do 
more because I just wasn't satisfied with uh, the things that I learned uh, in the classroom and I always wanted to be more active. So I always joined different groups, organizations, and I always networked with people. And, and I was always interested in meeting new people and learning from them. And of course, as I mentioned, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur to try something myself. And so I started a first company when I was, uh, when I was finishing my bachelor and I started this company by basically you know, just reading an article on the internet and reading about this brand called Xiaomi in China and how amazing it is because uh, everybody was talking about it, that it's a, it's a new Steve Jobs, it's a Steve, Steve Jobs of China or, or whatever, whatever you call it. And so uh, I basically decided, yes, I want to take this product from China. Yeah. Have you ever heard about this company? No. Okay. So uh, let me give you some background. So as I said, so how I became an entrepreneur, right? So I read this article about the founder, Lei Chun, who was supposed to be, or many people looked at him as a Steve Jobs of China. And why? Because he founded this company called Xiaomi and they sell mobile phones and uh, different stuff, accessories. And they started as a company that was focusing on design, focusing on really high quality product, but selling the product for half the price of all competitors, let's say Samsung, Apple, and all of these guys. And, uh, you know, I read about this guy when I was in Czech Republic, when I was studying at the university, and I was like, wow, this is amazing, right? Like, how this is possible that the phone is great, and it's for half the price. Like, like how is it, how is it possible? I want to test it out. So I ordered one phone on Alibaba uh, that uh, came two weeks later, and I started testing it out. I started using that phone, and it turned out to be, to be very, very good. And another good thing about Xiaomi was at that point that they had really, really, really large pool of fans around the world that were actually translating the software from Chinese into English and into many other languages. So, so basically, it was possible to have that phone in any language that you could think of. And Czech and Slovak was actually one of the one of the languages. And actually, the forum in Czech, uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia was one of the one of the most active ones. They were actually very actively contributing to make that phone great in terms of translation and maybe correcting some minor bugs and 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 stuff like that. And so, because this opportunity was there, right, right on the table. So we had a great phone from China for half the price. It was great, and plus we had this forum, or we had this pool of pool of uh, pool of fans of this brand that were translating uh, the, uh, the the software into different languages. So we took that, and we basically started importing these phones. We found a supplier in China, and we started importing these phones and selling them in Czech Republic and Slovakia. And so that's how I became an entrepreneur. Well, that's pretty cool. I like that. So, remind, there's a phone that was made in China, which is a smartphone, something like 4T or 4C. It's quite a quite a good spec, quite a good spec phone, but not very Could popular. Could be, yeah. There is well many known. brands. There is many brands, and honestly, I don't know this one in particular. I know that there is many, many brands. Like as I mentioned, Xiaomi is well known globally because they even sell the phones in India. They sell them in Singapore, all around Asia. They are not really in Europe, or they are not in uh, the US because of. Uh, because probably you know they have a lot of problems uh, in the media. You could you could read about about some patents uh, problems, and also they don't understand the market, right? They have no idea what's going on there and how they should how they should market their products there. And also the competition is much higher, so uh, much bigger. So uh, so yeah, so they're they're all around uh, all around Asia. There's another brand maybe you have heard about OnePlus. Uh, it's That's also the one. very successful. Yeah, so it's a very successful Chinese brand. And they actually sell mobile phones globally. I think one of their biggest markets is India still, uh, but uh, they focus on Europe as well. They have offices around the world. So, so yeah, there is a lot of Chinese brands that are trying to trying to get into international markets. Yeah, I think it's like one plus one now or something. Where the, uh, it's been around for a while and they've evaporated. You know, new, new yeah, new. Yeah, you know, so one plus one, one plus one was the first version, and now they already released one plus five. That's so it. Uh, they already have five, five different types of phone. Yeah. So how did you go from selling phones to Czech, in the Czech Republic to doing the startup <laughs> thing in, in in Asia? You know, conferences and all that. That's quite a jump. That's quite a big. That's quite a difference. How and how and why? Of course. 
Yeah, so so basically, this startup that I joined, I'm not the founder of the startup, uh, the startup which is called Startup Grind. Uh, so I joined this company because because of my first business, I moved to China because I wanted to explore how we can grow the business. I wanted to meet our suppliers face to face after having some sort of success online and in Czech Republic. And so I moved to China after one year. Uh, being in China, I sold the first business to my co-founder, actually 50% in the, of the company to my co-founder. And I wanted to explore more. And I worked with startups. I, I mentored different startups in terms of fundraising because uh, some people needed some help with that, uh, with that thing. And because I knew a lot of people, I could connect them with some VCs and stuff like that. So I was basically just running around for a while and trying to figure out what I want to do next. And so then, you know, I... One of, the, one of the biggest issues that you have when you move to a different country is that you don't know anybody, right? You don't know what's going on in the ecosystem, and especially China, where the culture is different, language is different. You need a lot of support. And so I actually attended one of the events that was organized by Startup Grind, and I really loved the people that were doing it, and I loved the format of the event because you could meet a lot of people, and it was international, so it was much easier to, uh, to get by when it comes to meeting people. So uh, I joined a couple of events. I volunteered for this organization. I helped them with a couple of events. And then the company, which is based out of San Francisco, they were looking for somebody to help them to grow the community, you know, and they were looking for somebody uh, that could also help them to build the brand and expand the business in Asia. And I was in Asia at that point and they knew I was meeting people and, and building community. And so we kind of, uh, we kind of aligned you know, my hobby with what they were looking for. And that's how I ended up basically uh, working for this company, you know, and now hosting a lot of events and conferences and building this this company in Asia. So when you say hosting the events, you're purely just marketing or just purely the... So we actually, it's, it's, uh, we are community. We are number one community in the world. So I personally, I don't host all the events. What we do uh, I guess you have heard or uh, maybe you have attended Startup Weekend, right? So so it basically works the same way. So Startup Weekend, they find people on the ground in different cities. They are not their employees. They are basically just uh, part of the community. They are the community leaders for the company in that city. They host the events, and we basically support them with all the resources, with the branding, with support if they have some problems, if they need some mentoring, if they need, uh, for example, if they are trying to get some sponsor partner, they need my help, I am here for them. So, so basically my role in this company is not to host all the events around Asia. It's more about finding the right people in different places, uh, empowering these people with all the resources and all the tools and also with the knowledge that we have because we have hosted a lot of events and let them host the events, become the community leaders, become the influencers in their ecosystem, and then basically just working with these people and making sure that they get a lot of value out of it and that they uh, support other entrepreneurs in their city. So, so I am basically HR kind of guy, you know, because I work with people, I find the right people, and then I support those people. I don't host those events all by myself. That's pretty cool. And speaking of the support, is the support yeah. like structured, like you know, some online courses like Coursera, for example, on Udemy, or is it just similar like TEDx, where it's just yeah, loads so of it's, smart lessons? It's both, right? So, uh, you know, when it comes to you, ask me about these resources, right? So, so there are two uh, two things. So, first, we try to empower these people, these local community builders that host our events and are responsible for our brand around the world. So we work with these guys. We have some online courses for them so that they can learn. We support them in terms of network. If somebody I know is uh, coming to China and I know that he's going to be visiting this place, then I can connect them with the community leaders and they can host him. They can bring something special to their ecosystem, right? Because they don't have that global network. They just, uh, they just have the network in their city. But because we have people everywhere, we try to connect the dots, right? So this is how we support these people that are actually building our 
brand, let's say, because they take our brand and host events and, and make the impact in the community, right? And on the, other, uh, on the other hand, you have these resources and articles and videos that we produce thanks to all of these events that are happening or our conferences that we have in Silicon Valley, Barcelona, London, and all around the world. Uh, basically, we take... We take these videos, we upload them to YouTube, so we have a lot of videos, we write a lot of blog posts, we have our Medium channel, which is the largest Medium medium publication out there when it comes to entrepreneurship, or one of the largest, I don't know the numbers right now from the top of my head, but, but we are definitely top three, top five, and so we have a lot of people that write articles about entrepreneurship, about venture capital, and we basically provide this distribution channel so that many people can read it. So, so yes, we provide a lot of, lot of, lot of resources. We have a lot of content online and we also have a lot of content offline because we host these events, let's say 1400 events just last year. So, so it's a lot of, a lot of, lot of content. Yeah, cool. Uh, at the end of the talk, at the end of this uh, podcast, I mean, um, I must talk to you about some of this stuff. It sounds fascinating. Uh, yeah, more information Happy for me. Share. Yeah, cool. And you also talked about or alluded to an incubation. So you help help businesses get off the ground. Can you what can you tell about your about your incubation? What kind of yeah, support? Yeah, so we are, stuff like that. Yeah, so so when it comes to startup grind, we are not an incubator. So we don't invest into companies. We are not VC kind of company. You know, we don't do that because that's a whole new business. If you wanna if you want to host events and if you want to build community, if you want to host conferences, it's a whole new business compared to incubation and VC, right? So we don't do it now. Maybe we might be doing it in the future. I don't know what's going to be the, what's going to be the development of the company and, and how uh, everything is going to, going to, uh, going to come together. But uh, basically, so, so we don't do incubation, but I think the biggest value that we bring to the table is that we have people everywhere in the world and, Let's say you can imagine we have people in London, we have people in Silicon Valley, we have people in Tel Aviv, we have people in China, in Beijing, Shanghai and other places. And so what is really, really fascinating to me and what is a big value is that, you know, yeah, many people from Silicon Valley, they want to learn something about Asia, but they don't know where to start. So if they if they reach out to us or if they are our speaker, let's say if they if they are from some companies and they spoke at our events, you know, they're basically part of the community. And so we can help them to get connected to the right people if they go for a business trip to Beijing, let's say, or if they go to Thailand and if they want to meet the tech community there because we have local local curators or local directors or whatever you want to call it so that you understand what that role is. It's basically we have them there and so they can help you on the ground. And I think this is the, this is the biggest value. So uh, we don't really do incubation, but we can definitely help companies to expand because we can connect them with uh, different people. Uh, a lot of VCs come to our event, so sometimes we can connect them with VC. Uh, and it happened at our events many, many times that uh, people raised money because of our events. Uh, also, we have conferences where we don't do incubation, but we have a startup program, which basically means that we've, uh, we, we give exposure to startups that are selected so that they can pitch, they can go through mentorship program uh, that is uh, that that we do in uh, in partnership with different VC funds, so that we have people from VC to give you mentorship or to give you some training when it comes to how you should pitch your idea or your business. And of course, we arrange meetings with those VCs. You know, if you are selected as a company to uh, be part of the startup program, so so we do a couple of things. We work hands on with some startups, but definitely. We are not doing it at such a scale as VC or other incubators that I could call our company to be an incubator. Oh, that's all right. I was just very curious. And I'm also yeah. very curious because you mentioned like uh, expanding. So if a company were to go or to go to the East or to Asia or to start in Asia in general, what are the common yeah. tropes or what kind of common misconceptions about the culture or the consumer culture <laughs> over there that businesses, whether Eastern or Western, need to be aware of over there? You know, what, what yeah, that's a very good pitfalls? question. Yeah, it's a it's a very good question, right? So so let's focus on China, let's say, because again, that's where I am right now. I'm in Shenzhen, I'm in China. We are skyping across the world. World. So uh, uh, let's talk about China. So yes, China is a difficult market, right? You can you can hear it all over the internet that uh, Uber, you know, was uh, kind of pushed out of China. Many companies failed in China and 
Uh, China is very close ecosystem when it comes to internet that Google is blocked, Facebook is blocked and, 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 and all of these things, right? That you read all over the internet and all over social media all the time, right? The second thing is, yes, there is a different culture. There is a different language. And, and so it's very hard to figure it out. You know, you cannot just move here and, and, uh, kind of like expect that you can figure it out yourself because yes, the language is different. The culture is different and the business is done differently here. It's not, yes, maybe if I'm from Czech Republic, right? I'm from Europe. And if I'm going to move to the US, I'm not saying that it's going to be easy for me, but it's definitely going to be easier because I speak the language and I think I can understand the culture. I can understand the people. And yes, it will still be difficult because there is competition and I don't understand the legal system and I would have to figure out how to set up a company. But, but the information is out there and if I want, I can find it. But when it comes to China, there is a problem because the information usually is in Chinese, you know, so, so it's very hard for me to figure it out. And Google Translate will not help you, trust me. You know? And, uh, you know, yes, there is some information in English because there is a lot of expats in China already that are trying to kind of connect China with the rest of the world. They write about it. They do videos about it. But still, the information is, I would say, you know, I, I don't want to say that it's bad. In many cases, it's good, very good piece of information. But it's very, uh, it's very narrow because there's not so many people doing it, you know, so you cannot really find everything on the internet just yet, you know. And so, so yeah, this is the biggest problem, the access to information and being able to move fast because you will always be reliant on somebody else to give you some advice or to give you that information, to translate that information for you. And so it's basically impossible to move fast in China just by yourself. And even if you speak Chinese, right? Like I have a lot of friends that speak Chinese, but still, even for them, it's hard because everything changes very fast. And even they speak Chinese, they study Chinese, they are still not at the level as a native speaker. So they will always have this kind of disadvantage, you know, uh, that you probably don't have in the US when you move there. You, if you move there or if you are there, I don't know. Or if I move there, even though English is not my native language, but I can still kind of speak and I can talk about anything with anybody. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the, that's the number one, number one thing. Uh, w- okay. Please, please ask if you have anything. Well, I was just going to say that China is an interesting country. A few years ago, it replaced USA in purchasing power. It's got a burgeoning middle class. It's a very interesting country. There's, I think there's a bit of a, a bit of some, well, there's a few other things to discuss with regards to politics, but I shan't go there. But you were going to say something, Jan? No, no, no. I'm just, uh, yeah, you know, the politics. And I, and, I, and I told you at the beginning, right, I don't like to talk about politics. And it's, it's not that, you know, there is a lot of things that uh, people say about China and that China should be doing better or is not doing right or whatever you call it, right? Like, like there is definitely these things and it's happening around the world. And, you know, you can just, uh, if you open your Facebook, you will probably uh, hear a lot about Donald Trump and what's going on in the U.S. So, so, you know, I just, I just don't like to talk about this because it's not my, uh, it's not my expertise, but yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, like China is definitely a very exciting place. And, uh, you know, yes, you can look at it from many different perspectives. You can look at it from a tech perspective. You can look at it from uh, the the completely different ecosystem perspective that it's closed, that you need VPN if you want to get online and stuff like that. So so it's definitely a very interesting place to to watch and see what's going on. And if if it's place for you or for your business. Right. And uh, uh, I just wanted to after I said that there is a lack of information or the access to information is very limited. I would like to add one thing, and maybe I don't want to say that it's misconception, but one thing that people should uh, pay attention to or should have in mind if they want to do anything in China is that they should have the Chinese partner. You know, they should have somebody whom they can trust, uh, with whom they have relationship, who is aligned with what they're trying to do and is going to help them to, I don't want to say conquer, but to expand into China. Because you just cannot do it by yourself. It's just, you know, many people tried and most of them failed. So, so that's something that I would like to emphasize when it comes to entrepreneurship and business. Oh, definitely. I agree. Uh, or at least you say that I have some connections or one connection in Hong Kong. But uh, yes. I don't know, don't know to what extent he is business savvy, but a connection nonetheless, so an interpreter. Um, yeah. you, you talk about information. 
Is there any and, and medium? You know, you got one of a big presence on medium. Is there any yeah. particular blogs, blog articles, or videos, or in, or playlists even that you would recommend some of the audience to check out to learn more information, or or some worthwhile knowledge that you think everyone should be aware of? Or is there anything worthwhile? Yeah, absolutely. There is many many resources, right? So so some people, uh, for example, one thing if you are especially especially if you are from the startup industry, let's say, or if you're a startup, then uh, definitely there is a couple of people in China that are running accelerators and they're foreigners or they're expats. And and so they produce some content from time to time. I know that the China accelerator, uh, one of the, one of the first foreign led accelerator in China, they uh, write some blogs. They even used to have a podcast about China. They were interviewing Chinese founders and foreign founders in China. It was really, really good. I definitely think it's worth uh, if uh, if you are interested in China, it's definitely worth it to check out their past episodes. I don't think that they are active anymore. I don't really think that they're doing some new stuff on a regular basis. But if you go to China Startup Pulse podcast, then you will be able to listen to some really, really incredible stories of uh, foreign entrepreneurs succeeding or struggling in China and also, let's say, China-based uh, or Chinese entrepreneurs that are very international sharing their stories. So, so I would definitely check that one. And uh, I can send you more. I think from the top of my head, it's definitely harder for me. It's not, as I said, there is not so much. And I am very, when it comes to quality, you know, it's, it's even less, right? Because uh, many people try. I have a lot of friends that are doing cool stuff. Let's say I would recommend another that just now popped up, uh, China Channel, ChinaChannel.co. Uh, it's a, a website run by my friend, and uh, you know he is organizing different conferences. He is a WeChat expert because WeChat is an app that is basically everybody has it in China. Everybody uses it. Uh, everybody uses uh, uses this app every single day. Couple hours they can chat. It's kind of like WhatsApp, but they can also have moments there, which is kind of like Facebook feed and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, so the resources, right? So yeah, ChinaChannel.com is really interesting resource. They focus on uh, marketing in China, in social media, on social media. And yes, WeChat is definitely one of the platforms. The the friend of mine that is running this, uh, that now I know why I was mentioning it. So, so my friend Matthew that is running this uh, website, he is a China and uh, especially WeChat expert. And and so why? Uh, I think it's interesting to talk about WeChat is because, yes, it's a social media platform in China because there is no Facebook. There is, uh, you know, yes, there is WhatsApp, but not many people actually use it. There is nothing. There is no Twitter. There is no other social media uh, platform or website or whatever, uh, whatever we have in mind uh, in China that is widely used outside of China or that is widely used by us by people that are from Europe or from the U.S. or from India, wherever. In China, it doesn't work. It's just blocked. And so they have their own. And WeChat is one of the major ones. And it's really interesting because, as you mentioned, yes, it's a social media platform. It's a WeChat. Uh, it's a chat. It's a, it's a messenger. Uh, it's also, it has finances. You can, it's basically like a fintech product. You know, you can buy anything. You can order taxi from WeChat. And so it's basically this whole ecosystem and that's why people use it all the time. People are basically on WeChat nonstop, you know, when, when, uh, when, you, when you look at it from this perspective. Because, yes, they can read news, you know, they can connect with their friends, they can chat with their friends, they can share the pictures with the friends. They can also order taxi, they can pay for their rent every month and stuff like that. So it's really, really exciting. And ChinaChannel.co provides really, really uh, interesting, interesting information when it comes to WeChat and when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to marketing in China in general. And this guy also hosts uh, a conference about WeChat in uh, Shanghai and probably maybe some other place in the future as well. But he hosts this, uh, hosts, uh, hosts this conference every year and he basically invites people from all around the world that want to learn about WeChat or about China and also some experts from China and from all around the world that actually know a lot about this thing. So, so it's definitely another interesting resource to check out. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, I've heard of the uh, app they have over there, WeChat. I've heard that yes. of everything there, including banking. 
So that seems yes. very versatile app. Seems pretty cool. They have everything. They have really, literally everything you can think of that uh, you need to have different apps in Europe or in the US. You need to have 10 different apps to do that. WeChat does everything. Hmm. All right, cool. And some of these podcasts, I'll have to include a link to them in the description later on. Yeah, I will send it to you. I will send it to you. So the one, and I, and, I, and again, as I said, it's not really active right now, but uh, it's called uh, China Startup Pulse. And uh, it was uh, ran by China Accelerator guys when they were very active uh, when it comes to startups and tech. And they are still uh, they are still around. They still uh, invest into startups. But uh, when it comes to the podcast, I think the podcast is not longer active. But they have a lot of episodes there, and they actually have great great insights when it comes to China and tech. Yeah, that's that's all right. So in the meantime, though, what is it you're working on, and what's next for you? Yeah, so, you know, as I said, I'm working for Startup Grind. That's my full-time job right now, and I'm really focusing on growing the company in China and also in Asia. I'm really trying to find the best people I can in the community and empower them. And, of course, they help us a lot because they host our events and they help our brand grow. But at the same time, I'm trying to help them as much as I can to expand their business, to help uh, build their personal brands or to help build their networks and stuff like that. So uh, that's what I'm doing. That's kind of the main thing. And I definitely want to be focusing on that for uh, the foreseeable future uh, because there is a lot of potential for us still in China. Uh, But at the same time, you know, I'm very passionate about China and I'm very passionate about connecting China and the rest of the world. And and again, I'm super happy to have this call with you and to chat and, and to be on the podcast because, you know, I think, as I mentioned, there is not enough information about that. And just a little, another piece of information or a little, a little or short piece uh, or something, something that is out there about China is good. The more, the better. And uh, so, uh, so I do that. So I try to create some content around China. I'm very active on Twitter, actually, and share interesting articles that uh, come my way uh, about China, about tech. Uh, and also from people that are also active in the China ecosystem or uh, entrepreneurs that came from the U.S. and are starting uh, starting their businesses here or trying to expand their businesses here. So, so really, I think it's really important to have this kind of community of people that are trying to uh, trying to show what's going on here in a in a business perspective, you know, because many people talk about China as how polluted country it is and and how cheap labor is here, even though it's not longer true, I would say, in general, <laughs> because it's getting more and more expensive. But yeah, many people talk about politics and many talk, many people talk about this and that, but but not many people talk about the tech and what we can learn from China when it comes to building business and when it comes to when it comes to scaling your business. And and I think this is really important for us because uh, it doesn't matter if we're going to move our businesses into China or if we uh, try to expand into China. But again, China is going to have a big influence on what's going on in the world uh, in terms of business, in terms of startups, in terms of economy and all the other things. So it's really important to pay attention, I would say. All right. So as we wrap this up, what is one little takeaway that the audience needs to understand when it comes to doing business in China? So, uh, again, there is many takeaways, but uh, from what we have talked about. Right. So I think it's really important If you want to do something in China, it's really important that you come over and you spend some time here in China or at the beginning, at least that you connect with people that live in China or have lived in China and uh, they will share the experience with you because it's really, really important to get those insights. And the key, the the very important thing, and we talked about it earlier, is uh, if you want to do business in China, you will need to find a partner, local partner that will help you to understand the culture, the language, but the landscape, the business landscape, and will be able to help you to get to the right people, meet the right people, talk to the government, and all of these things that are really, really necessary when it comes to doing business in China. So, yes, finding a partner. But again, you will not find a partner if you don't live here or if you don't know anybody who is doing something in China or you don't know anybody who is Chinese and who is interested in what you do. So you will probably have to spend some time here or spend time in the community. Yeah, cool. That's why, yeah, that's, that's some good, solid advice there. But as we wrap this up, what is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? Yeah, so uh, as I said, I am, uh, I'm very active on Twitter 
and uh, I'm also active on Instagram, and that's how we actually connected, which uh, which is uh, pretty pretty good. I really love that hustle that you DM people and uh, you try to get uh, get them on the show. I think this is a way to go these days because social media is changing everything. And so if you if you want to connect with me, it's uh, uh, very easy to find me on social media. I'm everywhere as your China guy. So if you go to Twitter and search for your China guy or Instagram or Facebook or even LinkedIn. You will find me there, or you know you can search for my name, and and you will definitely find me. And so so I'm very happy to connect on social media. But also, if you have any question, specific question to doing business in uh, China, or when you're trying to plan your trip to China and you don't know where to start, you can shoot me an email at uh, Jan uh, Jan, which is J A N at startupgrind.com. And uh, you know if uh, you have a reasonable request. Uh, I am definitely very happy to help, and and I try to reply to everybody. So so happy to connect there as well. Oh yeah, cool. I'll have those. I'll have those in the description below. Yes, thank you very much. But Jan, it was great having you on the show. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry for the troubles because we were back and forth. First, the connection. I think also this is something that you should include. Uh, this point because yeah it's hard right like i'm in china and it's hard to connect because you know you need vpn for all the services like google hangouts and facebook and this and and even skype is not super stable here even though i'm at home i'm using wi-fi and and still we had some problems at the beginning and throughout the call uh that the connection wasn't super super good so i think this is the expectation that you need to have if you want to come to china and if you want to be here just have that expectation that the world doesn't or the, uh, the 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 things don't work as everywhere else in the world and that you will have to adjust you will have to be more patient with everything you know so so just get ready if you want to do something in china <laughs> oh yeah definitely definitely but bear that in mind ladies and gentlemen bear that in mind however <clears throat> however in the meantime everyone ladies and gentlemen at home if you haven't already Click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification that's right next to it for the latest uploads. Because this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So go out there today and do something remarkable. How cool is that?